So before I get to SageMaker, I wanted to cover uh, the wide and broad uh, the portfolio of services that AWS has across uh, AI services such as uh, recognition, text-track, poly, transcribe, translate, uh, comprehend, lex, uh, forecast, and personalize, as well as the uh, machine learning uh, frameworks and infrastructures that we support, uh, including TensorFlow, MXNet, PyTorch, and more, uh, with interfaces such as Gluon uh, for MXNet and Keras as well as uh, the latest uh, GPU instance types with EC2 uh, P3 instance types, the latest uh, CPU instance types with the C5, uh, FPGAs and IoT with Greengrass, and uh, accelerators with uh, Elastic Inference. Uh, so Amazon SageMaker itself uh, provides the ability for uh, every developer and data scientist to build, uh, train, and deploy machine learning models quickly and at scale. Uh, so it consists of a variety of features, uh, including ground truth, notebooks, algorithms, the AWS marketplace for machine learning, uh, reinforcement learning, training, optimization, deployment, hosting, and more. Uh, so I'll be focusing on the algorithms. Uh, so there's the built-in algorithms uh, that my team and uh, sister teams have worked on, uh, including algorithms for NLP tasks, uh, computer vision tasks, or more generally supervised or unsupervised algorithms. Uh, so those involve writing uh, zero code to integrate with, um, as well as there's other options available. So there's the AWS Marketplace for Machine Learning, where uh, third-party vendors have provided their own uh, algorithms and model packages for end users. And uh, there's also, you can bring your own algorithm, so that includes uh, anything you can put inside of a Docker container. Um, and I'll be kind of focusing on that experience, doing like a deep dive under the hood uh, based on our experience uh, bu building the built-in algorithms. Uh, so what does that look like? So once you have an algorithm in mind, uh, there's kind of a life cycle to it, very similar to the software development life cycle. Uh, you have the interface, which is how you expect the user to interact with your algorithm. The system, uh, so um, what systems are you going to use to implement that interface, and how do you navigate the trade-offs? Uh, and then testing, so uh, once you've chosen a system, uh, how do you test it to make sure it performs as expected? Uh, and machine learning code is a little different than regular software, and I'll get into that. And then finally, communications, so how do you document your software and make it easier to use? And for the sake of time, I'll be focusing on um, the, the first uh, three. Uh, so let's deep dive right into interface design. So we have uh, the inference code um, on the uh, right-hand side and encapsulated, uh, uh, the training and uh, inference code encapsulated into a Docker container that's uploaded to a EC2 container registry. Uh, and then you bring that to um, the model training, uh, so a SageMaker training job. Um, and you have your data set uh, that you have in S3. And uh, so the SageMaker platform runs your training job. Uh, and as output, you get a model artifact, again, in S3, which you can then use for inference. So that's inference either in the offline setting, like a batch transform job, or in this diagram, it's the online setting where you have a hosted endpoint. And uh, let's say, for example, you have a client application where you have uh, requests with um, unlabeled data, and you get the responses back, responses back with the uh, predictions. Uh, so in this talk, I'll go through a toy example of the exponential moving average. Uh, so you're given the hyperparameter alpha, ranging from 0 to 1. And the mean is defined as alpha times the data of the current time step, plus 1 minus alpha of uh, the previous, uh, the mean from the previous time step. And so we'll go through uh, the inference as uh, based on the principle of mean reversion. So uh, time series that goes above the mean, we'll expect it to go back down towards the mean, and uh, vice versa. Uh, so let's jump into hyperparameters. So that's kind of the first interface. Uh, so we mentioned alpha. It ranges from 0 to 1. So it's a floating point value, and it's continuous. Uh, and we mark it as tunable uh, because it affects the model's error. And we'll get into the model's error when we talk about metrics. And we also mark it as a required hyperparameter. And moving on to uh, channels. So this is kind of your training data. You typically have a train validation test split. 
Uh, and you think about the um, supported uh, data types, so you can have CSV for dense data, libSVM for sparse data, and so on, uh, based on your customer's needs. And you also think about, um, is your algorithm, uh, you know, is it, does it use a file interface or a streaming interface? And for like large scale machine learning algorithms, uh, where the data doesn't fit into a single machine's memory, whether that's um, a large number of samples or um, uh, high dimensional data, um, you think about um, implementing a streaming interface, and that's kind of what uh, we used for most of our built-in algorithms. Uh, so in this case, uh, we have a train channel and a test channel, and we use CSV for dense data, and we use uh, file mode. I'll go into the differences between file mode and pipe mode uh, in a later slide. Uh, so you also think about the model format, so it could be a, pro a proprietary model format like a black box, in which case you can vend your model uh, through uh, the SageMaker model packages on the AWS marketplace, or if it's an open format, you can um, kind of provide and document code of how to introspect the model, such as this deserialization and serialization code here, where uh, yeah, I've used the date as the version, and the parameter is the mean that we learned from the uh, training job. So this is uh, a simple Python dictionary, and uh, JSON serialization is sufficient. Moving on to the mean squared error. So we have, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the training metric we have uh, for this algorithm. You can also think of uh, performance metrics uh, um, such as like the response latencies on the inference, uh, but we'll focus on mean squared error for this example. So we have the target minus the prediction squared uh, summed up over all such targets and predictions divided by the total of uh, number of uh, predictions. And we also at the bottom log it out uh, so that uh, we can integrate it with SageMaker's hyperparameter tuning jobs. Um, so once you've defined the interface, uh, you think about decomposing machine learning workloads into storage, compute, and network operations. Uh, so you can think of storage as different tiers. Uh, so there's Amazon S3, Amazon EBS, uh, GPU memory, CPU memory, CPU cache, for example. All as different tiers of storage, and they all have their cost performance uh, trade-offs uh, when you evaluate their uh, throughput and latency. Um, so for example, in training, uh, you can consider um, um, you know, does your, does your algorithm take uh, multiple epochs over the data or just a single epoch over the data? And the way this is expressed in SageMaker is uh, in training jobs, we have file mode and pipe mode. So in file mode, the data is uh, downloaded uh, by the platform before the beginning of the training job um, to disk. And in pipe mode, the data is streamed from S3 uh, directly to the algorithm without hitting disk. So, to compare and contrast the approaches, uh, you can see that file mode is easier to implement because it's based on files. It's faster for many epochs because it's cached on disk. However, you do have to wait for the initial download time uh, because it's downloaded before the start of the training job. And um, uh, you do have to size the disk volume associated with the training job uh, to hold the, the data. And there's a limit because there's a, a limit on uh, today on EBS volumes, uh, for example, 16 terabytes. Um, for the sake of time, I'll skip the contrast, which is basically the opposite. Um, so moving into the compute side, you think about CPU devices, GPU devices, multi-GPU um, devices where there's multiple GPU devices on a single machine, elastic inference where you can attach uh, an accelerator uh, to a machine. Um, so today you can think of that as like a fractional GPU, and there, of course there's mobile devices and IoT devices. Uh, for our built-in algorithms, uh, for most of them we rely heavily on uh, Apache MXNet to handle this uh, breadth of device support. And so uh, when you're thinking about a single machine and the compute, you're thinking about uh, parallelizing across the cores of that device. And then when you include the network, you think about parallelizing the operation across uh, the many machines. Um, so in the training context, um, um, you have a single machine and moving to distributed, uh, there's a com computation communication trade-off um, that you have to evaluate. Uh, and moving to inference, um, you think about uh, vertically or horizontally scaling your load uh, based on the model complexity, the number of concurrent requests, the size of the payload, and so on. 
And here I've suggested metrics uh, for measuring the network, such as throughput, latency, and jitter. Uh, so now that you have the systems for your compute storage and network operations in your machine learning workload, you want to test it. And you can use uh, typical um, software uh, development strategies, such as unit tests, functional tests, integration tests, and load tests. Um, however, uh, with uh, machine learning, there's an extra dimension of accuracy, so I wouldn't just think about load tests. Um, so there's a project from Stanford wor worth uh, noting that they put out a competition uh, and a leaderboard, I think that was shown in earlier presentations uh, as well, that they put out a methodology for how to um, go about measuring this that I'll show an example of in a second. Um, but uh, naively, you can think about uh, training as optimizing for throughput and uh, inference as optimizing for latency. In practice, however, uh, the latency of a single prediction um, looks very different than the latency of uh, 10,000 predictions. Uh, so this example leaderboard, they have uh, a bunch of contestants uh, submitting um, uh, image classification models on the ImageNet data set. Um, so uh, you can see t teams from April to September of last year, uh, most of them submitted a ResNet 50 deep learning model, which is, has over 25 million uh, parameters. Um, and uh, you know, the team from April clocked in over 66 minutes. and uh, the team in September clocked in under 20 minutes. So you might think to yourself, you know, how did they, um, how did they achieve such performance? Uh, and you'll you'll see, you know, they use a number of machines, uh, and they use the AWS uh, P3 16x large instances with the NVIDIA V100 GPU types, and they also use a variety of frameworks uh, such as PyTorch and TensorFlow. And I think uh, there's a more recent results with MXNet. Um, so I'd like to touch on some common uh, performance optimizations of uh, how you might be able to achieve this. Um, but before I get into that, I'd like to make sure you're aware that there are trade-offs. So if you're optimizing for time in one dimension, your training accuracy may suffer in the other direction. Uh, that said, there are some training tricks, such as using uh, lower mix precision. So you can get away with using 16-bit floats, whereas typical um, numerical floating point operations you know, happen with 32-bit floats. So with 16 bits, you save half the space and time. Uh, you can increase the batch size, which means you increase the hardware utilization. Um, so if you increase the batch size, that's increasing the memory utilization, which uh, increases the compute utilization, uh, which means your training uh, goes faster. And you can do about optimizing the network between the machines. Um, so there's uh, two common approaches where you have uh, synchronous stochastic gradient descent uh, with uh, a ring-based all-reduce. Um, where you know, the workers uh, communicate to their adjacent workers about the model. And there's a, another common technique that's asynchronous stochastic gradient descent with a parameter server, where there's a centralized server that the, the workers communicate the model to. Uh, so you can see there's a trade-off uh, between those approaches, between the synchronous, asynchronous, and the centralized, decentralized, um, that um, uh, that results in a trade-off in the accuracy as well. Uh, so moving on to inference, uh, the, the, the tricks here are kind of more common to typical web services, such as caching and queuing. And caching, you can think about bringing the model weights as close to the unit of compute as possible. Uh, in queuing, you can think about uh, driving the utilization. So let's say you have multiple concurrent requests coming into your um, model server, um, well, you can kind of use a queue to execute those concurrent requests at the same time for a fixed uh, latency timeout um, so that they get batched into the GPU and the GPU utilization goes up, but you, there's a cost in terms of uh, you know, the response that comes in first versus the response that goes in last um, with these, uh, uh, via the timeout. Uh, and finally, there's a low precision uh, so if you think about, in the extreme case, you can have a binary neural network where the weights are single bits. Um, but similarly to training, you can have 8-bit uh, integers or 16-bit um, floats. Uh, so how do we uh, design uh, this exponential moving average uh, example algorithm? Um, so we load the hyperparameter alpha. And uh, we load the 
uh, training data. And it's a streaming algorithm. So we have uh, we initialize the moving average to 0. And we iterate over the data in each time step, updating the moving average, and finally uh, uh, returning that. Uh, so in this, uh, and I didn't have time to demo the, the, the Docker step and the create algorithm API call. Um, but uh, when, you, when you do that, um, you'll see you'll have uh, an algorithm registered in SageMaker that you can then use uh, with the platform. So that, uh, that includes in this algorithm call the metadata for the algorithm, uh, such as the name, uh, the description, um, the ECR URI, uh, and so on. Uh, so the AWS uh, marketplace uh, for machine learning today, uh, this is a screenshot uh, from uh, actually last week. Uh, so it has a wide variety of algorithms and uh, model packages available for uh, consumption uh, from a breadth of vendors. Um, so, uh, so I forgot to mention, yeah, so that same create algorithm API call will allow you to publish your algorithm optionally to the AWS marketplace uh, for vending. Um, so let's go ahead and use our, uh, use our uh, exponential moving average algorithm. So here I generate a time series of 400 points, uh, and we split that into a train test split. Uh, so we train on the on the past uh, and test on the future, and then we uh, register. Uh, sorry, we call uh, a, we create a hyperparameter tuning job. Uh, so basically, that means we're trying to find the best mean squared error that we talked about uh, in the earlier slide for the best hyperparameter uh, alpha. Uh, so we tell SageMaker to uh, run six training jobs uh, and two at a time, so that over time it, it finds uh, the best error, uh, which turns out to be a value of uh, 0.91 uh, over the test set, uh, which maps to 0 0.67, uh, et cetera, on, on the hyperparameter alpha. And so 0 0.67, you know, going back to the formula for the exponential moving average, that's uh, two thirds on the on the current value and one third on the on the past. Uh, so yeah, uh, just um, wanted to say in conclusion, you know, this was just a really deep dive into the into the algorithms um, piece. Uh, so um, so if you use like the built-in algorithms or the, um, the AWS marketplace for machine learning. Um, you really don't have to write any of the, that code I showed. You can just kind of uh, bring your hyperparameters and, and uh, your data set and run training and, and, and do your inference. Uh, but if you are interested in building your own algorithm, hopefully I piqued your interest and uh, you know, gave you enough information to get started. And so this is like the whole universe of uh, AWS machine learning services. Uh, so it's not just the algorithms. You know, There's uh, a wide uh, variety of uh, tools and capabilities. Um, so I'd like to thank you for your time, and I'll be available at the uh, Amazon booth uh, for questions throughout the day.